The 777 auto flight system is similar to the auto flight system on the 747. You control the system with the mode control panel and monitor its status on the PFD. You can connect the auto flight system to the FMC for a fully automated flight. There are, however, some new features on the 777. There are two auto throttle arm switches, one switch for the left thrust lever servo and one switch for the right servo. Arm the auto throttle. There is no enunciation when the auto throttle is armed. With two auto throttle servos, the auto throttle system positions each thrust lever independently from the other. Set the altitude increment selector to auto. This is another new feature that has been added to the 777. Touch the highlighted area. In auto, the selector is rate sensitive. Turning the selector fast will increment the altitude more than turning it slow. Altitude is changed in increments of 100 feet. A finer increment is available for setting the MDA. If the barrel minimum is set on either PFD, you can set that value rounded up to the nearest 10-foot increment in the altitude window. For example, if the barrel minimum is 1363, you can set 1370. In the 1000 foot position, the altitude selector is not rate sensitive. The selector only changes the altitude in units of 1000 feet. Next, let's look at a typical auto flight operation during takeoff and climb. You are cleared for takeoff. The takeoff go around switches or TOCA switches are located on the thrust levers. You have advanced the thrust levers to 1.05 EPR. Push a TOGA switch. Pushing either TOGA switch engages the auto throttle. The thrust levers advance to the takeoff reference thrust. In this case, the second takeoff thrust D rate has been selected. At 80 knots, the auto throttle enunciation changes to hold. If the flight directors are not on and airplane speed is greater than 80 knots, pushing a toga switch displays the flight directors. If the flight directors are on and LNAV and VNAV are armed and airplane speed is greater than 80 knots, pushing a toga switch disarms LNAV and VNAV. During the climb, the flight director commands a pitch to maintain the greater of V2 plus 15 or the airspeed at rotation plus 15. If this target speed is exceeded for more than 5 seconds, the target speed is adjusted to the new speed not to exceed V2 plus 25. The flight director commands roll to maintain track. Now engage the autopilot. A slash P enunciates on the FMA. Unlike the 747, where a single autopilot may be engaged, pushing an autopilot engage switch on the 777 engages all three autopilots. If the auto throttle was not used for takeoff and the airplane is above 400 feet, pushing the auto throttle engage switch engages the auto throttle. When reaching acceleration height, the FMC commands acceleration to 5 knots below flap placard speed. As flaps are retracted, the auto flight system sets the next target airspeed.
When you reach the thrust reduction altitude or flap setting set in the FMC, the auto throttle reduces thrust to the climb limit. If VNAV is not engaged, you can set climb thrust by engaging flight level change or by pushing the climb continuous thrust switch. An altitude alert occurs when within 900 feet of the MCP altitude. An oral alert sounds, a box appears around the selected altitude, and the box around the current altitude becomes bold. The display remains this way until within 200 feet of the MCP altitude. Within 200 feet of the MCP altitude, the displays return to normal. After level off, an altitude deviation alert occurs 200 feet away from the MCP altitude. The PFD altitude box changes to amber along with the ICAS alert message, master caution, and caution beeper. Return to within 200 feet of the selected altitude to clear the caution. Now that we're level, let's look at the track controls. On the 777, you can also fly a selected ground track with the same controls used to fly heading. Simply change the heading select window to track select by pushing the heading track reference switch. Track is now displayed in the heading track window and the PFD. The selected heading bug changes to the selected track bug on the PFD and the ND. The selected heading track reference on the PFD changes to T. Notice that the ND display orientation remains heading. The heading track switch has no effect on the ND display orientation. Now let's look at some of the ways to disconnect the auto throttle. You can position the auto throttle arm switches to the off position, or you can push an auto throttle disconnect switch. An auto throttle disconnect switch is located on each side of the thrust levers. Either switch disengages both servos. If disconnected by the auto throttle arm switches, the auto throttle is no longer armed. None of the auto throttle modes are available, nor is the auto throttle available for speed protection. If disconnected by the auto throttle disconnect switch, the auto throttle remains armed and is available for speed protection. Engaging flight level change, VNAV or TOGA engages the auto throttle. Pushing the auto throttle engage switch engages the auto throttle in the mode appropriate for the currently engaged pitch mode. Now let's look at the ways to disengage approach mode. Once both the localizer and glide slope are captured, the approach mode can only be disengaged by pushing a toga switch, disengaging the autopilot and turning off both flight directors, or if above 1500 feet radio altitude, pushing the approach switch a second time. When disengaging approach mode, the autopilot engages in the following roll and pitch modes. For roll, the autopilot engages in attitude hold if bank is greater than 5 degrees. If bank is less than 5 degrees, the autopilot engages in heading hold or track hold. For pitch, the autopilot engages in vertical speed or flight path angle. You have just been cleared for a localizer approach. Arm the localizer mode. You will use flight path angle to control the descent path. The MDA for this approach is 460 feet. So first set the MDA in the altitude window. From the approach chart, you note that the glide slope angle is a normal 3 degrees. Select flight path angle with the vertical speed flight path angle reference switch. Notice the window changes from vertical speed to flight path angle. Next, 
Engage flight path angle with the vertical speed flight path angle switch. The current airplane flight path angle is displayed. Finally, set a minus 3 degrees with the vertical speed flight path angle selector. You can monitor the airplane's descent angle with the flight path vector and the selected flight path angle symbols on the PFD. Finally, let's look at some auto throttle non normals. The auto throttle disconnect caution message displays when a failure is detected in the auto throttle system. After the system disconnects, reset the auto throttle and master caution system. That switch only resets the master caution system. It does not reset the auto throttle system. Touch the highlighted area. After an auto throttle disconnect, you may attempt to re-engage the auto throttle. The auto throttle left or right advisory message displays when an auto throttle servo failure is detected while the auto throttle system is engaged. A failure in either servo disconnects the auto throttle system and the caution message auto throttle disconnect displays. Reset the auto throttle and master caution system. That switch only resets the master caution system. It does not reset the auto throttle system. After the disconnect, you may re-engage the auto throttle to operate the remaining servo. For this example, re-engage the right auto throttle by pushing the auto throttle engage switch. Touch the highlighted area. Notice that the ICAST message remains displayed and the flight mode enunciation right speed indicates which auto throttle servo is active. The auto throttle message also displays when one auto throttle arm switch is armed and the other is not. You have just taken off. Set climb thrust. Use the climb continuous switch. Fly a track of 220. Descend to 3,400 feet using a minus 3.3 degree flight path angle. First, reset the MCP altitude. 